everyone. I am James Milan. Welcome to this special edition of Talk of the Town. It's special. Why? Because we get to do an ACA update. ACA, Arlington Center for the Arts, one of the major institutions in town and uh, a partner of ours who we get to check in with regularly throughout the year. We're delighted to do so. We are very appreciative of being able to get out of our own digs and come and see what's going on at ACA. And I am joined by Tom Formicola, the executive director of the ACA and the operations manager, Pam Shamley. How are you both? Very well. Great. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. I hope so. It has been a little while, actually. <laughs> Good to it's have you me. here. Yeah. yeah, we are delighted. Um, so this is the first of, we hope, many to come. Uh, visits to your space, and I, we will talk about what we can see around us um, shortly. Um, but, you know, these updates follow the same kind of, uh, it's not a formula, but it's a, you know, we have, we have our model. Uh, we want to know if there's anything you want to share from things that have happened before. Since we last spoke, I would welcome you to do so. I hadn't prepared you for that, though. No. So. Um, so if not, uh, we can just move right into what people can an anticipate um, moving forward. Uh, how could I not mention 12 long weeks of camp, uh, 12 <laughs> long, wonderful weeks oh, of yes, camp. Yes, of course, you forgot that uh, essential aspect. We had a great year. We served almost 1,300 campers this year, uh, which is like, those are record numbers for us, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we had a great group of teachers and a fabulous group of counselors, many of them um, teens from the local high school. And uh, we trained some interns who are going to come up back to us, hopefully, and be interns in future camp programs. Mm -hmm. um, and just like, you know, great interactions with kids and their families. And, you know, just so proud of that work and all that we did to, to make that happen and uh, provide opportunities for, to, for kids to create and to share. Yeah, I have to say, I was back and forth by this building uh, on a number of occasions throughout the summer, and man, there were kids everywhere. Yeah, they we were they really were. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that that's that's an excellent summation of the most Im well, not the most important, but an, an impactful last yeah. recent thing you did. And we hosted a jug band festival at the Arlington Beer Garden on September 30th. That was a great big su success, despite the gray weather. It didn't rain. We were biting our bottom lips and holding our breath and crossing our <laughs> fingers, but it didn't rain. And like there were between, by all counts, three and 400 people with us that day that came to hear um, three great bands and Pam led a DIY instrument making workshop. And then the kids that uh, made those instruments got to, um, to play them as part of a jam session with professional the musicians. and mm -hmm. shakers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I only caught the last hour and a half of it, uh, but it was packed. Yeah, it was I mean, great. You know, yeah. the, the beer garden's a popular thing, but combining those two was yeah. just absolute magic. Yeah. And the music was really good. Yeah, thanks really to our good. friends at Monotomy Grill and American Beverage and the Arlington Historical Society for making that possible. It was a great partnership. We loved working with them. All right, let's talk about what uh, what is coming up or well, what is going on right now. Feel free to jump in, Pam, I I'm going to say. We are in the midst of our fall term. Uh, we started in mid-September and it's going great guns and we uh, our enrollment is building term after term it's it's so great to see we have uh, every term it seems like we have more students than the the term before and we've been running more classes and um you know it's fabulous this term will run through about the middle of december mm -hmm. and uh, there are opportunities for folks to participate in multi-session classes as well as uh you know one day workshops there are a couple of two session classes as well and uh you know people sometimes think oh i missed the registration deadline all the classes start in september not true there are classes always starting yep and we have a bunch of i brought a cheat sheet with me because i don't want to forget anything of course anything. you need a cheat sheet so with all the stuff happening. we talk about but all there's that. um lots of stuff <laughs> happening through november we have a, a natural dying that's going to dive into like history as well as practice. Um, we have a no, linoleum printmaking class mm -hmm. yeah, um, right. that, that I just realized this morning. I guess I guess I didn't read my catalog closely <laughs> enough. Um, I'm super excited about the memoir writing class yes. that we have that's coming up, that's and um, it takes its inspiration um, from uh, food and identity. Mm. And so, folks that are really interested in food wow. and that that's a um, rich have topic. a story to tell, yeah. So I'm really hoping the registration for that is 
is robust. We have a, a, a favorite music appreciation class that's starting up in November, and we're looking at Russian composers this term. Uh, Dottie Burstein is the teacher. She's always fabulous. Her students love her, and we see her um, you know, year after year. Uh, and then there's embroidery. We have drawing dragons for the kids. I got to um, say, it's, you know, just even as you guys have described a few, a, a sampling of the offerings that, that are available, just the breadth of the expansiveness by which you, you see Center for the Arts. Man, there's just a, that, that gives you plenty of space in which to work. And boy, you guys are plumbing a lot of those different corners, I got to say. And Thank we're you. gifted that we have so many talented teachers mm -hmm. as well. So. Yeah, so let me ask you about the classes. Is, is the enrollment for those kind of every, everyone from 8 to 80 um, yeah, in, in general? Yeah, that covers or? it, I think. Actually, it might be like <laughs> 6 to 80. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. there are, are there classes that are specifically, like in each term, are there classes specifically intended for kids? You mentioned one. Yes. So uh, for our adult classes, if you're 16, you're old enough to register for an adult class. Um, and that's to make room for like some more serious art students that might be on the younger side. Uh, and, um, and we have after school programs uh, that are particularly designated for children and programs that are specifically designated for teenagers so that they're in groups mm -hmm. with their peers. And we've been doing a, a teen clubhouse on Friday nights oh, that's for years. Popular. That's yeah. fabulous and always like a, a favorite of ours, but also a, the, like, you know, we generally find that if there are some teenagers that find their way to that opportunity, that they participate in it term after term after term, which is, you know, just a joy to see. Yeah. There really are an awful lot of things that you guys do of all sorts, not just providing education. But this educational piece, I'm not sure if people are well enough aware of just how many courses are offered through the course of a year. And of course, how easy it is to yeah. get here and, and do those. Yeah. And of, of course, like, you know, we run on tuitions and so folks will pay tuitions for those programs, but we do a lot of free programs through the year. And it's not, a, it's not on my cheat sheet because I forgot to put it on there, <laughs> but we're also going to be recruiting any day now, if we haven't started already for our teen artists on the issues series, which mm -hmm. I've talked to you about before Absolutely. and every year that theme changes, but that's a free opportunity. We don't want there to be barriers to participation. We want involvement by young people who have something to say and are looking for a creative way to say it. And this year we're doing um, spoken word poetry. And so the, it's a 10 week program. It's free uh, by application. And um, we're looking to collect a diverse group of um, teens who are really uh, ready and interested in grappling in issues that they really care about and finding expressive ways to um, creative ways to express them and also to engage the general public in discussion about uh, those very issues. So uh, we're, we're in process with that. My right recollection now. is that that will happen, is it in the spring? So we've moved it. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, that program this year is gonna run from late November through oh. uh, early March. Uh, because we heard from our teenagers and from their families that like the late spring is just so chock full of other things that um, it's hard to make the commitment that you need to make in order to be able to, to see that program through. Yeah, yeah, that, well, I think that that's a great move on, on your guys' part in that way, because um, I do think that, I love the structure, we've talked about it before, this combination of you finding a different artistic medium in which to operate each time, yeah. and a different set of issues on which to concentrate, yeah. Yeah. but always, providing enough support and enough time for the kids to actually get something done. Yeah, and to, to get to, to know each other real, and feel right. comfortable with each other to be able to like sort of talk about those issues straightforwardly mm -hmm. and honestly. And I'm glad that um, since it wasn't on your cheat sheet and everything, <laughs> that, um, that given that it's going to be starting in November this year, now's the time to be talking yeah, about absolutely. it. So I'm glad you mentioned absolutely. that. All right, let's, what, what's next? Uh, I should mention that our winter term will start in January, that the catalog comes out in just a couple of weeks, and it will include um, uh, our uh, February and April vacation arts camp mm. programs. So by mid-November, people should be able to begin to register for programming in the new year.
What's next? What Are we all done? No, I don't oh, yeah. think so. Talk about that? <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about that next. Do you want to talk about it a little bit? Well, no, you can talk about it, Tom. You're the leader. But uh, it's uh, Future Illustrated. Yeah, which is our current exhibit. It just went up on the walls. Yes. Uh, it is with us through January. Um, this the Folks can see this behind me, right? Yeah, absolutely. This is actually a film that we've just sort of paused so it doesn't make everybody's eyes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it works much better as a still for yes. us. Uh, but it's fabulous, and, um, and, and the artist is Allison, Allison Power. Uh, and uh, we're so proud of this show, and we're so proud of all the work that's being uh, presented in it. Uh, and so I really encourage people to come. And, and you know, uh, and I wanted so. to say, too, because, you know, it's Future Illustrated, and, you know, and because of the genre a little bit, uh, you know, I think some folks had this idea that it was going to be a big downer, like, you know, right. given... I had, yes, given... The given, obvious. given everything, yeah, uh, and uh, I'm happy to say that it balances. I mean, it doesn't ignore anxieties, but it balances anxieties with hope. I think that that's great, and it reminds me of. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if you guys had a role in the uh, climate um, futures. Uh, you know, that ACAC project, did, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That that is all over yeah. town. But again, that was kids looking at the yeah. future in a certain way. And I, my expectation uh, was that that was gonna be quite doom laden in many ways. Yeah. And, it, and th it was really balanced yeah. between things that we do need to be worried about and do something yeah. about and other things that's, that, you know, that clearly recognized that yeah. there's optimism is yeah. warranted. Yeah, uh, we didn't have anything to do with that. I can't take credit for that, but Cecily Miller, who does great work, uh, was really at the helm and and I don't remember who the artist was, but it was, it was a great project. It was, and, and we don't need to be talking about yeah. somebody else's project by any means. <laughs> but they do great but work, too. <laughs> they do do great work. And, you know, the point is simply that as you're looking towards the future, it's just a great point that you made, which is, yes, we may all be feeling or we may, we, we may be tempted to, to ascribe our own feelings of concern and anxiety, project that onto others. But we need to remember, uh, hopefully younger people are feeling, you know, also hopeful about things. And all of us can use a dose yeah. of, of the good stuff. Yeah. All right. So that's, that is going on now. Mm -hmm. Anything else that's going on now? Or are we so I think that you know that we have just published our strategic plan and it's available on the website for folks to go take a look at whenever they'd like. And we're super excited uh, about it. We've spent actually more than a year developing it. And uh, there was a committee made up uh, of both um, board representatives and staff representatives. And then there was lots of opportunity for board and staff to you know, interact with that committee throughout the process and uh, lots of input as well um, through surveys and interviews mm -hmm. and focus group sessions uh, with uh, various community members, including like, you know, people who take advantage of our programs and um, uh, our, um, you know, peers that are doing this kind of work in, in other settings mm -hmm. and, uh, and partners that we work with throughout the year. So we really took our time and, uh, and really had a super thoughtful process that was really gratifying every step of the way. The plan is, uh, is, is really about sort of shoring ourselves up financially and, uh, and building our capacity and deepening our program. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is about infrastructure. A lot of it is about like making sure that we are running a sustainable organization mm. that, um, that we can be confident has a place on the future cultural landscape of our town. And while we're doing that, we wanna make sure that our relationships are, um, are growing and expanding and that we're listening to the community and there's a, a, a priority for inclusion. And so we really want to be sure that we are reaching out uh, in meaningful ways uh, to communities that are underserved or mm -hmm. underrepresented and making sure that they know that they are welcome here and making sure that there are um, things here that they are interested in and want to be engaged in. And the only way to do that is not to guess, but to like, you know, develop relationships um, with those communities and, um, and, and mutually, you know, build something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it sounds ambitious, as a strategic plan should be uh, in many ways, um, but definitely important, important work, especially this idea of expanding the reach of the ACA to 
people who may not know, uh, people who may not feel included at the moment, but who you want to include, uh, et cetera. It sounds like a, a project that will take five years. dedication. <laughs> yeah, it's a roadmap for five years. It's a road, years. right, yeah. right. And, and there's a lot of work to be done attached to it, of course. But that sounds like the right vision. I'm yeah. sure it took, uh, like you said, you took your time and you hammered it out. You it, know, it feels well. right, and it's a you know it's ultimately about creating a space that uh, you know where it's possible to um, explore the arts and uh, to make something and to share it with others, and we want everybody to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. But it's also we're we're continuing that strategic plan, and right in our we're thinking about what we're doing more strategically yes. and how does it fit with our goal right. and moving forward? I mean, it's super interesting. You know, I actually don't have direct experience with the strategic plan before and I wasn't skeptical, but I had some healthy mm. bit of skepticism about how it would like impact our like day-to-day -day mm -hmm. operations. Mm -hmm. right. And I have to say, like I have been surprised a little bit, but really happy to report that I reference the strategic plan nearly every day. And um, it, you know, it, it does focus us. It reminds us like what our priorities are. Um, and it helps me to like, it helps me to fundraise. It helps me to communicate about what we were doing and provide a context for what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, and you know, that's, that's it's a, super exciting. Yeah. I mean, right down to like, you know, building an agenda for a board meeting or a staff meeting. Yeah. Um, like, you know, we have a, a lens, a new lens for looking at a lot of things that we've been doing all along, mm -hmm. but we're understanding better how they fit into the big picture of what we do. And people, um, I'm sure your organization is, is very similar to ours and many others in this way. Uh, if people understand what the priorities are, yeah. then it makes it much easier for them to make the decisions that you don't want them having to turn to you or to you every time. Right. To make. Yeah. yeah. And, and we all need reminding of the priority. I mean, there's always going to be competing priorities. Exactly. And so we all need to be reminded like, about what we've committed ourselves to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, again, as I've said about other things, I'm, uh, you know, I sound like a cheerleader for the ACA, don't I? Well, I kind of am. Um, but I think that that sounds very promising. It really does. It also sounds like a lot of work has been done. Uh, already, because uh, as you describe it in a couple of sentences, there's no way for people to understand just the sheer amount of time and listening to each other and working through things that you don't necessarily agree. All that is part of this strategic yeah. plan yeah. process yeah. that uh, is invisible to the rest of us. But you know, I've been through a couple, as you can probably tell, and. Uh, again, it's 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 uh, it's quite an investment of time and energy yeah. collectively, and so I'm glad to hear it's. So I hope people will take the time to go read that plan, uh, and um, if they're really excited about it, I'm hoping that they'll take another step, which is we're in board recruitment season right now, and so we're looking actively looking for new board members, and there is some information about board membership on the website. And there's also an application for folks to fill out that just asks them essentially like, you know, why they're interested and what they like about the ACA and if they've been engaged before. And, you know, that's meant to just sort of open up a conversation about, you know, uh, what board membership might mean for them and whether we're, you know, a good match. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I always say to folks that like filling out that application saying you want to have a conversation isn't like, you know, signing, uh, you know, on the bottom line. It's an opportunity to explore the possibility. And um, and so I would encourage folks to explore the possibility with us. Uh, we're taking applications through November 15th and we hope to elect uh, a slate of uh, new board members, probably three to five folks. Uh, uh, at our uh, annual meeting, which I think is on December 13th. Okay. Which is All a right. Wednesday. Which is a Wednesday. So it is a step-by-step -step process and, or a multi-step process, and this is step one for folks. That's what they should understand. Yeah. Guess, right? Yep. Okay. Great. Absolutely. Um, I don't want to shortchange you, Tom, but we've got about 10 minutes left oh, or gosh. so. I want to make sure oh, right. okay. that uh, young Miss Shanley here gets her full so I'm going to talk about Arlington Open Studios. This is our 25th year, and we have over 75 artists at two different locations, Town Hall 
and here in this building at 20 Academy. So that's sort of the overview. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to drill down into more specifics. Um, at Town Hall, we have, and Tom, you've done a lot of work on this, so you can pick up the baton um, and talk a little bit about music on the steps. Yep. So we're working for the second year in a row with Tino D'Agostino, who's a board member of the ACA, I'm proud to say. And uh, he's bringing uh, his band Spajazzi uh, mm. to play a set. And there are also going to be some student musicians from the high school uh, playing some sets throughout the day on the steps of Town Hall, weather permitting. Well, and people may know Tino's name because, you know, he's, he's involved with a lot of stuff here in town. But he is, uh, the, he is a prominent member of the music department yeah. at the high school. I, I believe his title is Director of Instrumental Music. There you go. He's the Director of Instrumental Music and responsible for a whole lot of um, good experiences on the students' parts and on the audience part. Back to you, Pam. <laughs> so, so you've come into Town Hall, you've heard the music, you've entered the building. There's about 35 artists on the ground floor, and they range from woodworking, ceramics, jewelry, a lot of fiber artists this year, more than, than ever, as I recall, and painting. There's a wonderful embroidery artist that we have. All that will be at Town Hall on the ground floor. And then a short walk upstairs or an elevator ride, There'll be another 10 or 12 artists. Uh, Black Joy exhibit will be going on, three artists for that. And then we'll have a photographer, again, another jeweler, a uh, paper sculptor, which is a really wonderful artist, um, quilter. So a wide range, um, but be sure to go upstairs. And then it's a short walk, not even a block, to come up here to 20 Academy, this beautiful building. And we will have Harvard Alpaca Ranch outside 20 Academy. What? Just a little tent. I'm super excited about the alpacas. The alpaca <laughs> ranch? They're gonna bring alpacas, and I'm pretty sure they're not, and I'm telling the town that they're not, so we're hoping they're not. But um, they- so you're um, a big guy. <laughs> but they're out in Harvard, Mass, and they have an alpaca farm, and they're gonna bring raw wool that they get from their alpacas mm -hmm. and assume. also some products that they've made hats and mittens and other things because they were very enthusiastic about being outside. So I assume they're going to be wearing their wares, right. demonstrating how well they work. So that's how we'll be greeted at 20 Academy and you come in there and then we'll have another th about 30 plus artists on that floor. And it, the range there is just as diverse as at town hall. Um, we got metalworks or collage, some of you does these wonderful stones that are all painted like mandalas. Mm -hmm. And um, some, we have about 15 to 20 new artists for Open Studios. We have a lot of returning artists, which, you know, warms your heart because they like us enough to come back. But um, we And did 15 and 20 to 20 new ones new as well. Ones in addition. Wow. So the sad thing is this year we were, we, we listened to our artists and we limited it to the town hall and the community center on the on the ground floor where it gets the most traffic mm -hmm. and we and that's where we limit it so we mm -hmm. had a few less slots than i mm -hmm. would have liked to but we mm -hmm. had more artists than ever submitting which was kind of ironic um so you'll have those artists open studio artists on that on the first floor of the community center and then take a short elevator right up or climb the stairs like tom and i do every day and to the third floor which is really the home for aca mm -hmm. and We'll be having this gallery exhibit, and in it will be our poets, um, Steve Rotina and Jean Flanagan, have again oh, wow. mm -hmm. gathered a bunch of wonderful poets to mm -hmm. read, and that'll be going on in the afternoon. In the morning, um, Margaret Moody, who's one of our studio artists, will be doing puppet shows mm -hmm. early morning to um, early afternoon. Um, and then if you walk down the hall, we have uh, nature photographer Rick Ulick who's also a member of the Mystic River Watershed Association. Mm -hmm. And he is a wonderful wildlife photographer and captures these animals. He sits in the woods for hours to capture this. So it's, it's a beautiful exhibit. And he was here last year, and he's got new additions to what he did. And then the Mystic will be open, and they'll be having sort of an open house. Mm -hmm. And as you travel down the hallway, you can peek into our ceramic studio and we'll be having demos all day. So just drop in and peek and see what's going on. And I believe 
that covers all the action. How many artists altogether? About over 75, about 78. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and we had 2,000 people come visit us last year, so we're expecting about the same again this year, mm -hmm. maybe even a few more. I, I have to mention that like the, this is a great big project and the work starts for this in the spring. And, uh, and Pam uh, is, does amazing work all, like all summer long in the midst of camp. And uh, we would be remiss if we didn't mention our colleague, Annalise oh, Ruggles, Annalise who Ruggles. is also she like- She does an amazing job with all the art. She gathers her images and she puts them into little folders, digital folders, mm -hmm. and that can all be viewed on our website. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that So people truly... can prepare for, for coming and, you know- Exactly, you can get a preview, a little like context. a teaser yeah. of what's mm -hmm. to come, mm -hmm. and then kind of make a B line for it the artists that you're right. and then along the way you might see people that exactly. you didn't know the joy that you might have oh and then of course tom worked with to get all the music lined up because you're right up your alley um and then we also have michael and cat and delia who just like support and because there's a million pieces that go on this is a huge undertaking yeah. we yeah. yeah you know we do understand that and it does seem like a really good Problem. I mean, nonetheless, sad as you mentioned that some artists that you like to include you, you just didn't have right, space right. for. But it's a good problem to have in a sense. And uh, I have to say that people do, you know, this is one of those, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what you call them, like red letter days on the calendar for for folks in the uh, on their the beginning of the holiday shopping season. <laughs> because I got to say, in my own household, that as I mentioned to you. Our weekend plans, are, uh, our weekend travel plans have been altered to uh, accommodate uh, being able to go to the open studio. Oh, so. And I would be remiss to say that this year, because of Veterans Day falls on Saturday, oh. um, we didn't want to we didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. We want to show mm -hmm. respect for the vets. And so we're doing it on Sunday, Sun which is the first time we've ever done it on a Sunday. Which happens to work well for our travel <laughs> plans. So I appreciate that. But I guess they're um, celebrating it on Friday. but. I guess people have Friday off, so it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but we're at the end of the weekend, so you can go and have fun, travel, whatever, and then come back to Open Studios, which exactly. runs from 11 to 5. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, no, that's important to remind people. It's definitely a difference, but again, I, I appreciate the timing for that this year. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else you want to add? I think I've covered it. Um, look for this beautiful brochure. It's got features all of the current artists, and it's again Annalise made this, and it's beautiful. So, um, <laughs> and those people will be able to see those all over town, I would imagine, yep. and oh, be reminded looking, if they need to. We're looking for volunteers to help put these posters up. We're also looking for volunteers the day of Open Studios, where oh, you can be I'll a bet. greeter, a cheerleader, whatever. But okay. it's a really important because we found that having folks there to show people which door to enter. Sometimes these buildings as beautiful and historic as they are, are a wee bit of a maze to go mm -hmm. through. So we'd like to have somebody at each door kind of like, yes, you're here. Yeah, and I have to say, uh, you know, if, you, if, if the idea uh, of uh, taking that first step towards board membership is just a little too much for you at the moment, well, there's at least volunteer opportunities that are smaller scale. You want to come work for us, James? <laughs> <laughs> I think I am now that I think about it. <laughs> um, so it is always uh, a distinct pleasure to talk with you both, and I appreciate it. Pleasure back at you. you. We really do. I have been speaking with Pam Shanley, the operations manager, and... I'm sorry, the operations director, excuse me. Who knows, right? Wait. I know you guys are all caught up in your titles. Uh, <laughs> and Tom Formicola, the executive director of the Arlington Center for the Arts for this ACA update as part of our Talk of the Town. I'm James Milan. We really appreciate Tom's time yes. and Pam's time. We wish them good luck with all of the activities they have in front of them. And we expect to see you guys out there for one or more. For Talk of the Town, Appreciate you joining us. We'll see you next time.